David Stern um, from Living Independently, and we made quiet care and walked through the G uh, Healthcare, and that's the last time we'll be talking about any particular product. Uh, I'm here today uh, at Maj's request to talk. Maj? I am technologically talented. How do I get to my talent? Sorry. Okay. Thank you. I'm here today to talk about both wellness and particularly about how sensor technology, behavioral telemonitoring, helps in promoting wellness in the home. Uh, if we go here, we have sort of a conceptual slide of the components of wellness. And as Mach has talked about it and Eric and, and I'm sure the other speakers will, each one of those things are, are not separate variables, they're not silos, they interact. If I lose my job, my emotional well-being, and a lot of those other things will be impacted. If my mother is safe and secure, my emotional well-being as well as hers will be impacted. So these are interdependent variables. But interestingly enough, uh, as technology has emerged, they've almost emerged to, to, to respond to these different components of wellness. So we have tech biometric technologies that handle physical health. We, we have cognitive stimulus technologies that respond to our intellectual needs. And as Mike gave examples, we have many of those. Uh, but I, as we move forward, and we think about our desire as people in this field to integrate technologically these various components. components. I'd like us to step for, stop for one minute. And instead of seeing wellness in the middle there, see our own names. So David's in the middle there. And David right now pretty much can control how much of my business life and how much of my social life get involved with each other. Or how much of my spiritual life and my business life. And for example, although I may not mind that people in my synagogue know I was at CES today, I might mind if they knew I was at a certain other exposition down the hall. <laughs> but yes, it's funny, but one of our goals in technology is to get all those things working together. And right now I control how much they work together. And I just caution to have all that technology be controlled. Well, I have a say in how much of that information is shared. And I think part of what we have to talk about is how do we make sure that we utilize any minimal effect of those. That we're not, we're going to have this tremendous capacity to capture information. But let's think about if we really need it, if we need it for the well-being of those we care about. As I said, that really doesn't really fit neatly into any of these silos. In some ways it transcends them, in some ways it informs them. I think that's it. And, and, and this technology is sometimes called telecare or behavioral telemonitoring. And it, it refers to a broad range, you see the definition there, of minimally intrusive sensor-based technologies that continuously, automatically, passively and remotely monitor real-time emergencies and patterns of behavior in environmental conditions. These are really assistive technologies, or perhaps even assistive decision-making technologies that innate, provide information to inform the family caregivers or professional caregivers so that they can be more responsive and better attend to the needs of, their, of the, those they're concerned about. They identify significant changes in pattern of living, changes that may be indicative of emergency health problems. They alert caregivers so they may promptly respond, thereby preventing these problems from becoming catastrophic or serious illnesses. And Maj is very modest today, but Maj has done a lot of major studies on the impact of these technologies, not only on the well-being of people, but on, as what you mentioned before, you could have, I would have you on that, on the economic values of these technologies and controlling costs. And I guess to sum up, these technologies that we're talking about today, what they really do is they let you have a greater understanding of what's really going on in that person, you, the home of that person you really care about. They help answer the, these kind of questions. Has the person gotten up? Are they moving about? Are they okay in the morning? Have they fallen? Fallen in the bathroom? Fallen throughout the house? Have they eaten their meals? Have they interacted with their medication? Have their over, has their overall activity level changed? Is their sleep interrupted? And there's also the environmental factors. Has there been changes in, the, in room temperature that are dangerous? Are the lights off and on? Middle night, they get up to go to the bathroom. 
are the lights on? Are they not on? Has their stove been left on? Has their bathtub overflowed? These are a variety of kinds of issues that this broad field of behavioral color uh, monitoring is addressing. This is a little uh, sort of jigsaw puzzle that looks at where this telemonitoring, telecare fits in within broad telehealth. And much of broad telehealth, biometric telehealth, vital science telehealth, seeks to replicate remotely what happens in a clinical visit, a doctor's visit. So when you get to a doctor's office, there's the examination, there may be lab tests, you rely on the patient for self-reporting, you talk to that person. And you may even talk to family members and friends. 